Stories are powerful, and God has given us two key stories to tell the nations, to the world. God's story, the gospel, and our story, what the gospel means to us personally, and how we've been changed by it. For today's equipping session, we are going to learn how to effectively develop our own personal testimonies to better communicate and share how Jesus has made a difference in our lives. But first, let's talk about what not to do. Firstly, don't start off conversations with others, especially new friends or people you've just met with weird God stories. And when I say weird, I mean the dramatic supernatural stories. Now don't get me wrong, our supernatural encounters with God are powerful and effective. But these should come in the later stage of the conversation. Some other don'ts of telling our stories. Don't be long-winded. Droning on and on can cause your listener to be disengaged. When you keep your story brief, it allows your listener to ask follow-up questions keeping it a two-way conversation rather than a lecture. Don't be unclear. If you have multiple plot lines and multiple characters in your story, you are going to end up confusing your listener. Don't use Christian jargon. Words like redemption, born again, salvation, accept or receive Jesus mean little to people who are not Christ followers or they might have a, a different idea what it means. Don't have a superiority attitude. People will quickly be repelled and run the opposite direction when they hear self-righteous remarks, put-downs and condemnation. So, how should you tell your personal story, your personal testimony? If Jesus is so great, what did He do for your life? What visible change? has there been in your life since you knew Jesus? When you think about developing and clarifying your story, ask yourself, what is that one single key concept that is reflected in your life that is relevant to someone who doesn't know Jesus Christ or is living far from God? What is your greatest so what about your walk with Jesus? In developing your testimony, Think of this three-pronged foundation of your story. First, the keyword or concept that describes who you were before you met Christ. Second, the fact that you then came into a relationship with Christ. And third, the keyword or concept that describes who you are after walking with Christ for a time. For example, I was striving before, but now I'm grateful. I was self-destructive, but now I'm healthy. I was guilty, but now I'm liberated. I was fear-stricken, but now confident. I was once very anxious, but now I feel encouraged. You might think, my story is too simple or it's not dramatic enough. You don't need dramatic supernatural stories for the Holy Spirit to speak into the hearts of men. What people are looking for are real, authentic stories they can identify with. So, here's a simple before and after framework that can help you write out your story. And yes, this is your homework and keep it to no more than 100 words. Yeah, you might groan, oh, homework, why must I write it out? Why must it be limited to 100 words? Here's why. It prevents you from being long-winded. It forces you to provide clarity and identify that single key concept of so what about your walk with Jesus. Writing it down helps you edit and to sharpen your story. And doing this homework is important for you personally as it causes you to reflect on your walk and relationship with Christ. Together with the three-pronged foundation of your story, add an opening at the beginning 
and a closing at the end. So here's how it should look, section by section. First, the opening. Identify a theme or keyword you can use to frame your story. What did your life revolve around? For example, did it revolve around relationships, or reputation, or is it money? Briefly this illustrate how that influenced your life. Second, your life before Christ. Paint a picture of what your life was like before you came to know Jesus. That key word that describes who you were before you met Christ. Don't dwell too much on or brag about past sin struggles. Share only the details that relate to your theme or keyword to show your need for Christ. Third, how you came to believe in Jesus Christ. Share the fact that you came into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And fourth, your life after coming to Christ. Share the keyword or key concept that describes the change that Christ has made in your life. You can point out changes in your behavior, character, attitude, or perspective. Be realistic. We still struggle as Christians and we have not reached perfection. But what's different? And why is that difference good? And fifth, and finally, the closing. End with a statement that summarizes your story and connects back to your theme. As you prepare to write your testimony, here are some other helpful points to take note. Firstly, pray before you write and share your story. Write the way you would speak. Don't be overly negative or positive, be honest. Don't criticize any church, denomination or organization. Avoid Christian jargon, just use layman words. And practice telling your story until it becomes natural. Your simple, straightforward, before and after explanation of Christ's work in your life can have a deep impact to bring another person one step closer to God. It's not dramatic, supernatural, spectacular stories that will change lives. It's honest and relatable stories that will. God can and will use your personal and honest faith story for His glory and for your listeners' good.